so if you attempted doing this, the um, solution yourself, then you should have arrived at, um, okay, so where should I write this? Let's write this. Okay, let me change the color so that it's clear um, what I just wrote. So you should arrive at your, um, sec, just moments, you have the wrong pen selected, okay. So we should, you should arrive at your I um, A as being equal to 3.052. You should arrive at I B as being equal to um, about 1.4, that's amperes, amperes. And you should arrive at I C as being equal to negative 2.8 three five thereabouts amperes so you should have arrived at this okay and so notice that your IC is negative so really if we had gone in a clockwise direction IC would have been positive now the last thing I did in, in the, just for the end of the last video was to ask what will IP be now IP is the current going down downwards inside this branch is the current going downwards inside this branch now we found out we found found that out earlier on. Do you remember? That was I A plus I C. That was this value here. Okay. So this value here is actually your I P. I A plus I C. So your I P will simply be equal to three point zero five two plus um, minus two point eight three five. And when you go ahead and do that solution, um, let me come down and write the solution down here. So you end up with an I P that is approximately equal to um, 0 0.217 amperes now let's just scroll up and see is that what we got earlier okay that's exactly what we got earlier we got IP with the branch current method we found IP as being 0 0.217 and with mesh analysis we found exactly the same answer now it's the same circuit so no matter the method you use, you should arrive at the same answer. So if it turns out you use one method and arrive at one answer, and you use a different method and arrive at a different answer, you know there is something wrong. Okay, so that's the branch current method, and that's nodal analysis. In this video, my main focus is going to be, and that's mesh analysis, I should say. My apologies for that. So dealt with mesh analysis, we have dealt with the branch current method. Okay. Now let's go into what I just mentioned um, mistakenly. Okay, so let's go ahead and deal with nodal analysis. So what we want to do here is deal with nodal analysis. So I'm just going to write out nodal analysis. Let me write that here. Nodal analysis. Okay, so nodal analysis. Now just like you had with um, mesh analysis I will write out the, the steps we have now with nodal analysis um, effectively there are three steps that we're going to take um, you could argue there are two but let me write it out as three different steps so with our first step what we're going to do is assign or um, write out all the nodes so we want to assign names to all the nodes so let's say we're going to label all nodes okay so really you label all nodes after doing that select one of the nodes as a reference now the the idea is that um so let's say select one reference the idea behind this is everything we're going to do now will be with reference to that particular node now notice that uh, we talk about potential difference and not just about um voltages okay so the fact that this voltage here is a hundred volts, if I say the voltage at this particular node here is a hundred node is a hundred volts, um, and what current will flow? We cannot tell what current will flow unless we know the voltage at this other node. If we know the voltage at this node, we can find the potential difference across the resistor. Now, potential difference across the resistor divided by the resistance will give us the current flowing through that branch. So we label all nodes, we select one of these nodes as our reference, and then third step, we now use KCL. So we write out our, um, so let's say use, let's just write use KCL. Now we will use KCL at each node, so let's say at each other node. Now I'm using the word other, other here now to refer to the fact that we are not going to use the reference node, we're not going to write KCL for the reference node, okay? So, 
Um, now we've said earlier that a node is wherever you have more than two components. In the first video I said that um, a node is where you have more than two components connected together. So at this particular point, note that you have a voltage source, a resistor and another resistor, three components connected together. So this is a node. Let me call it node A. Um, if I come to this point here, you have three resistors connected together. This 5 ohm, 4 ohm and 8 ohm resistors are connected together at this point. I'll call it node B. Then I'll come down here, we have a 10 ohm resistor, a 4 ohm resistor and a voltage source connected to this point. So this is also a node. Let me call that node C. Now this also is a node. Here we have four components connected. A voltage source, and a resistor, another voltage source and ground, the ground terminal. Now it's not every circuit that you will necessarily be given a ground terminal, but in this case we are given a ground terminal and so this is a node. Now I'll call this node G. The reason why I'm calling this node G or maybe node R, but let's just call it node G. So node G is our reference. I will select node G as my reference and it's a good idea to select ground as your reference. It makes things quite easy to work with. Okay. So we have selected node G as our reference. Now we want to use KCL at each other node. So we have three other nodes. Now we're going to use KCL at each of these nodes. Okay. We're going to use KCL at each of these nodes. So we have our node, uh, we've assigned, we've labeled all our nodes and we've selected one as a reference. Now we want to write KCL at node A, node B and node C. Now I should probably mention that, okay let's go ahead and do that. I will start with node B. Um, so I'll start with node B. Okay, I'll go ahead and start with node B. The, I'm wondering whether to state this now and hoping not to confuse anyone. So what we are interested in, in this case, is, is not just the name of the node, but we actually are interested in the voltage at each of these nodes. So actually it is, uh, what we are really interested is in, in is VA, VB, and VC. That is actually what we are interested in. We are interested in the voltages at these nodes. Now, actually, we know what VA is. Since this is our ground node, and all you have in this branch is a voltage source, then if we're moving from this point here, um, this, are, this is our reference node. We are, so if it's our reference node, we assume it is zero volts. By the time we go across this, we now have positive 10 volts. So VA will definitely be equal to 10 volts. We know that. We know that VA is equal to 10 volts. Now we also know in the same vein, if this is zero and we move in this direction, the only thing in this branch is a voltage source. So we know that VC also is equal to negative four volts. Negative because we start from zero, we go against the voltage. Your voltage is actually um, downwards because of the way the voltage source is drawn. So this is your positive that's your negative. So you go against the voltage source. So we um, acquire a negative voltage of 4 volts. So VC is equal to minus 4. VA um, is equal to, okay, I just draw the arrow up here. So that's upwards. So VA is equal to 10 volts. Now I will go ahead and write the node equation for node B. Okay. We are looking for KCL. Now KCL says that the sum of all currents going into a node or the sum of all currents going out of a node are equal to zero. So if you sum all the currents going into a node is equal to zero. If you sum all the currents going outside a node, it is equal to zero. So the currents going outside the node towards the left, we'll, we can find that as the potential difference across this resistor divided by this resistance. Okay, so potential difference, current going out, we assume VB is more positive than VA, so the current is going out. If that is the case, we have VB minus VA over 5. That gives us the current going out in that direction. The current going out in this direction will be given as VB over VC divided by this resistor, resistance. Now KCL says the sum of all of this will give 0. So VB minus VC divided by 4 plus the current going downwards will be VB minus our reference. Reference is zero. So that will be VB minus zero 
over 8. Okay, and that gives us the sum of currents. So this sum of currents is equal to 0. Now, reason why I made a point of noting what VA and VC are is that once you look at this, if you put in your VA and you put in your VC, you end up with VB minus 10 over 5 plus VB plus 4 over 4 plus VB over 8. VB, I hope that is clear, over 8 is equal to 0. Okay, so this is VB here. Um, I apologize for that. Maybe I should do a once over with a different color so it will be obvious what that is. Okay, so that's VB. Okay, um, what color was I using now? So, so we have that this sum is equal to zero. Now, notice here we have one equation, we have only one unknown, which is VB. So, we do not have to write node equations at VA and VC. Okay at VA and VC. Well, I should probably mention that the second reason why I am not keen on writing the node equations for those two nodes, VA and VC, is that you might get confused trying to find the current in this branch. Okay? So the current in this branch, you could actually assign it a branch current and use, use that in there because um, you can't calculate the current in that branch since we do not have a resistance in there. So since we do not have a resistor within this branch, you cannot use Ohm's law to determine the current inside this branch. So it could be quite confusing, but the good part is, since there is no resistor inside this branch, all you have here is a voltage source, then we know the voltage at this point, we know the voltage at this point. It means these two values are actually not unknowns. If they are not unknowns, we do not need to find the, we do not need to write out the node equations for those nodes. So if you know the voltage at any particular node, you do not need to write the um, the node equations at that node. You don't need to use KCL at that node. Um, so if you want, we could modify this statement here. We could modify this statement here. Say use KCL at each other node um, whose node voltage is on none. Okay, so use um, KCL at every other node whose node voltage is unknown. Okay, so like I did with every other video, I'll pause at this point and you can go ahead and find the value of VB. So this should be quite easy to do. I would suggest you take an LCM and go ahead and solve this. So see you in the next video.